My name's <laughs> Suzanne. I'm a landscape designer. I run a landscape design business and I've launched um, my other business, Perth Succulent Bowls. I've had the privilege of being approached by some of Perth's top landscape designers, uh, residential builders and uh, landscapers. Uh, they're coming on board and starting to incorporate my designs into their clients' backyards. We also uh, hire out our bowls to um, corporate companies who have seen the value in having real plants in their offices. In about November last year, we launched our website, perthsucculentbowls.com.au and we design and do same day deliveries of succulent arrangements from Quinn's Rocks all the way down to Mandra. But one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is, what's so great about succulents and like, why do you love them so much? And what tends to roll off my tongue is that they're, you know, they're, they're really water wise. Uh, they're virtually maintenance free. They're perfectly suited to Perth's sunny Mediterranean climate. They seem to thrive in our sandy, you know, neglected soils. They look great all year round. And even in winter when there's nothing really flowering and the, the trees have lost their leaves, all these succulents are bursting out with flowers that last and last and last. But that's still not why I really love them and why I've developed my whole business around them. I've learned that succulents come in virtually every colour of the rainbow, which is fantastic from a designer and for someone who loves to play with colour. And what I've discovered is that I can have beautiful pots of colour in my backyard and I can have them year round, they look great and they really are virtually maintenance free. What I tell people is to choose a colour combination and there's three guidelines or there's three colour schemes that if you apply to your bowl your colours will look balanced and they'll sit well together. So your first colour scheme would be a monochromatic colour scheme and that's where you pick one colour and you'll use different shades of that colour throughout the whole bowl. You can go and get a beautiful black bowl because black and blue just in the eye it just seems to look really nice to me and the blues really stand out. And you can fill that blue with some beautiful blue chalk sticks and you can maybe then also pair that with some of your Cullen Corey tricolour and then you've got your beautiful um, <coughs> echeveras that will sit in there as well. So that's going to be monochromatic. You're going to go with blue and you'll use different shades of that blue to keep it consistent and the colour's going to look great for that bowl. The next colour scheme that you could go with is um, called analogous. So if you go home and have a look at the picture of a colour wheel, that's where you pick colours that will actually sit next to each other on the colour wheel. So you could go green, blue and purple, or you could go orange, yellow and green. And if you stick with those three colours in your bowl, the colours are going to sit really nicely together. What I wouldn't do is if you pick three colours that sit next to each other, I wouldn't go and get three of the same amounts of colour and disperse it through the plant. I would maybe have, you know, more of two of the colours and then have finch and pops would be third colour going through it. The last colour scheme would be your complementary colours. And your complementary colours are colours that are going to sit opposite each other on the colour wheel. So my favourites for colours that sit opposite each other is going to be blue and your orange. They're going to pair really nicely together. Uh, other opposite colours would be red and green. Here's a great example. The more sun that these Calicoe Lucias get, the redder their leaves are going to get. So you get that beautiful deep hues of red going all the way down and through and then at the bases you'll get your nice pops of green. The other colour combination that sits really well is purple and yellow. They both sit opposite each other on the colour wheel. So you've got your sedums, you've got your aeonium arboreums and if you pair that with a really nice gold round sedum, see how those two colours, they just burst off of each other. What you want to do in your design is you want to try and replicate the shape of the bowl and invert it. So get another one of these bowls and sit it on top. So you're going to invert your bowl on top and then you're going to sink it down so it's about one third of the height of this bowl. And that's going to give to the human eye a nice element of proportion. It's going to look like it sits right. So the whole bowl doesn't have to be one third high, but you need to have some high points in this bowl and then cascade it and taper it down. Now we can talk about the actual design and how we're going to fill it out. 
So if you can remember these three easy words when you get home, you'll be able to put together a succulent bowl. They are composed of the thriller, filler, and then your spiller. So your thriller plant is going to be the focal point of your bowl. It's generally going to be dramatically different from the other plants. It's going to be spiky. I will always use um, an aloe as my focal point to get the height. And the other thing with your thriller is that you want it to look good from all angles. Because it's going to be viewed this way. You're not going to angle it out towards where you're sitting. This thriller plant is also going to be what determines your height for your rule of thirds. Coming down from your thriller, you've got your fillers. These guys are like your worker bees and they have, they have the most important job. They need to gradient your high point of your bowl all the way down evenly, slowly, proportionally, effortlessly, angled right near to the edges of your bowl. So you're going to have to pick your high plants to go at the back and your lower plants to go towards the front. You want your bowl to appear like it's got layers of texture and that's what your filler plants are going to do. With your rosettes, your echeveras, you're going to want to angle them so that you can see them evenly around the bowl. That looks nice, that looks amazing and that's what you want to be seeing. The other role of these plants is to fill your gaps. So you want to create the right, you want to create the right size gaps or you want to select the right size plant for your planting bowl that you're going in. So the last element of the design are our spillers. And the role of the spillers is to create a feeling of abundance and opulence and make it look like the bowl is just overflowing with beautiful succulents. It's just the icing on the cake really. I tend to flatten mine out a little bit to get more bang for my buck or I'll try and cut the roots in half and split them out so that they go nice and wide and I'll just, you know, push them up hard against the rim of the bowl. I really want to talk about light and lighting requirements. If you want your succulents to maintain these beautiful colours, these nice compact forms, they need four to five hours of direct sunlight every day. They don't necessarily want four to five hours from, you know, 12 to five of Perth's 40 degree heat every day, but they'll tolerate it if you give them a little bit more water. So this bowl looks as beautiful as it does and has all of its colors because it has the natural sunlight. Thanks so much for watching uh, my small movie today. Um, if you'd like more information on uh, succulent design or services that we offer, feel free to visit my website www.perthsucculentbowls.com.au Thanks so much. Bye.